Yeah, man. Thanks for jumping on. Appreciate you. No worries. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing that. Mine's water. Nothing exciting, though. <laughs> I got a heavy metal cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd be surprised how many I've seen. But uh, <laughs> so, thanks for joining us on the show, brother. How's uh, everything no down there? Uh, you- it's going okay. I was actually the reason why. Fuck, do I say this in the middle of an interview? Fuck it. Why not? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> um i was i was running like a pinch late then just by a minute or two because i just got a um uh an email through from the uh from the record company saying that the stock is uh running about a week late oh no so, yeah i know so it's like full battle stations over there he's like kicking everyone's ass it's like the stock was late by a week turning up to the um to well the red with amaha records in the netherlands so it's yep. um but then they've got to like do the stock from there to go to napalm in the us and to go to fucking somewhere else as well and then there's a stock allocation that comes to us so it's yeah they're freaking out because that all has to be handled and i'm like mate that's fucking that's a new problem get us our stock it has to be here for our release date and he's just like it's all right we're all, all good at the moment as long as we don't lose any more days and i'm like oh man i've been there been there but yeah no no so it's a, no yeah it's I think I think this is like probably the most amount of effort we've put in, with like pre-release, you know, yeah. with like hype and interviews and all of the other shit that's going on. So yeah, it's not not an ideal thing to be happening at this point in time. But um, yeah, hopefully it's uh, touch wood. It doesn't even happen at all. No. Sort of, sort of no, shit I'm, out and it'll be fine. I'm knocking on wood for you too. Yeah. Happened to me Thanks. a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago actually. Now, when we we my band did a little run, and we ordered our merch, and uh, went to pick up the merch, they're like, "Oh no, Friday!" And I was like, "No, mate, we're leaving at five a.m. on Thursday." They're like, "Friday," and I was like, "No, bro." No. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, okay, Wednesday," and I'm like, "Wednesday," and they uh, went. <laughs> went and he, he's like, "Yeah, mate, got your merch. Come pick it up." Went <laughs> went to pick it up. Opened the box and they'd misprinted like the logo, like doubled up. And I went back in and ruined this dude's day. Hey, he was not happy. Right. He was like, What do you mean? That's a file. I was like, Did you check the uh, the proof print? Yeah. Yeah. Did you? No. And he like hauled ass and had to do the whole lot again in a day. <laughs> See, it happens, well, man. It happens. Once again. That's a them problem, not a you problem. It's just like, mate, fucking sort it out. Or like, I remember for like Never Enough Snuff too, like it's for the vinyl. Like, yeah, mate, the company went through was a fucking nightmare. If it could have gone wrong, they damn as well made sure it did. <laughs> it all came out in the end, right? It all worked out. No, it, it did, but it was still, we still had a lot of issues. Like the first pressing, all the vinyl was filthy. We had, um, really, you know, there was issues with the car. There was like fucking just one thing after another, man. That was terrible. But anyway, you get that. Oh, man. Well, i got to say, though, apart from all that, I've heard yes. this album uh, since yep. my mother, which is out on October yep. 4, and it's brutal as fuck, dude. It's a fucking great album. It's pretty gnarly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm stoked about it, man. Like, it's really, yeah. really good. I mean, it's been what four years since Never Enough Snow? Like, what's? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, that went quick. Yeah, but it is. No, it's it's. Yeah, no, I remember it was. Yeah, it's 2020, March 2020. It's like first album in uh, 20 years. Yeah, bang, straight into lockdown. So. Uh, Two are gone, everything gone. <laughs> it's like, mate. So, but yeah, how how uh, how time flies. But um, yeah, we're uh, we're fucking chuffed for everyone to hear this one. It's um, like we're really really happy with it. So, I mean, I was like, I really, I thought, I I really liked Never Enough Snuff musically, but I wasn't wrapped with the production in the end. I, I don't know what happened. It was just like it was sounding really really good, and then we like got the final mix, and something just went wrong. Um. Just with the levels and stuff, I thought the vocals were too loud. You couldn't hear the bass properly. There was just, it was, I don't know, it was just a bit out of whack for me. A lot of other people are like, I reckon it sounds fine. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But like, you know what it's like when it's your own shit. You get really yes. picky. 
So yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, man. I know. Like we we could we could spend a lot of time on that subject. I know. It's a whole segment on fucking yeah. bands who don't like their own shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A cute, colourful uh, card that pops up with me and yeah. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit well and truly, but uh, but out, outside of that, like it's it's um yeah. I think like everyone's done an, an exemplary job on their uh on their performances on this one. I think the, like the levels are much better. The um yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's really fucking good. And I'm yes. really excited for everyone to hear it. And I'm really excited, especially for people to see the back. So. Man, well, of course, uh, like, didn't you, you parted ways with Tim just before it was written, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And Matt took over, like, production like or, or writing, right? Yeah. Well, it's – Matt actually wrote the album in lockdown and then came back and said, right, I've written an album because there was fucking nothing else to do, mm. and here it is. And then Dave recorded the drums, like, pretty much right away. And then we'd, like, um, yeah, said to Tim, add as many songs as you want. And then we got crickets, and we got crickets for about a year. And then it was just like, mate, we, <laughs> we either progress as is or that's it. It's all over Red Rover. So I was like, right, we're rolling on because we've already got this album done and the drums are already done and everything. And then, um, yeah, we gave him all of the music and said, right, do your bit. Waited again about another nine months, more crickets. And I was just like, right, fucking that's it. So then Matt had to come back, do the, all his, all the guitars again. Um, well, you know, because he'd, he'd recorded like, what, like two years prior. So he had to like relearn the songs and redo everything. Um, I think he'd already done his solos at that point, so it was just a matter of like reamping and everything else too. So uh, yeah, this album probably should have been out at least a year ago, if not more. I'd say probably eighteen months ago because of delays. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, everything happens for a reason. So here we are, coming out when it's coming out. Yeah, man. Hey, it's on the uh, way though. Uh, so uh, with obviously with members all over the place and, and the writing yeah. process. Yeah, do the ideas just get bounced back and forward, like with Dropbox links and stuff, and then it, it comes to you and then back and forward? Or is it sort of get together, have a jam at some point, and then mm. back to the drawing board? Like, how does it really work for you guys? Okay, so um, pretty much, well, I mean, nine of the ten songs are from Matt, and then you've got one song by Rob. So, um, but even with that, I think, like, Matt had, like, put it to guitar, so... <sighs> Essentially what happens is like Matt will play everything to a click track. Yeah. That click track then goes to Dave. Dave comes up with the beats because he's a fucking machine. Yes. <laughs> comes up with incredible beats. And it's amazing how much like what we hear for the guitars and the click tracks and what in your mind you think's going on. It's like in your mind you're just like blast beat or really heavy with stupidly fast double kicks and whatever it is too. But when Dave gets his hand on it, it just it, it changes everything. It's just like, wow, I, I didn't expect that or – Wow, that's really interesting. That's suddenly changed everything. So, um, yeah, having, having um, bounced it across there, then uh, Rob will do his bass over the top of that. It's essentially like I think he just sort of does what he wants. And then for the for the vocals, I've, I I get it right at the end. So I wait till everyone else has done their piece and I listen to it and I'm like, right, okay. And then I came up with vo vocal arrangements of what I thought would work. I uh, went and sat with Matt. And um, we had a bit of a play around with it. And I said, okay, I think this. And he's just like, yeah, why don't you try this? And then we'd sort of either go with his idea, my idea, or meet somewhere in the middle. Um, but then that all changed again when we got into the studio, you know, because then you got another set of ears in there as um, Mark out at um, uh, uh, Beverage Road Studios. He was fantastic. I did the um, uh, vocals with him also for Never Enough Snuff. And he's got his own opinion, which is, good like i really actually i'm um not that much of a uh an arrogant fucker that i, I i'm not interested in other people's opinions because i very much am you know like i'm very old school and i'm going to stick with my basic structure you know and they're like hey why don't you just try this and i'm like oh, okay something different or different for me so um yeah so between myself um mark and matt we um yeah we, we came up with the final vocal arrangement I was super happy with and then everything gets handballed across to joe dave's brother and um he did the um yeah mixed and mastered and then joined the band Woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> there you go you know what those vocals are fucking like disgusting i love it 
Thank so you. Great. See, it's a compliment. <laughs> you know, you know, when you in metal, you go, those vocals are fucking gross. You go, oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> but man, you've you've it's it's. I, I just don't know how you do it. Like, as yeah, a, it's. Myself. I was I was talking to someone else about it in. I can't remember if it was in an interview. I actually might have been just live, just like socially chatting with someone. And I'm like, I do with my vocals try and get them as heavy as I can get them, but I do actually want people to understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, I quite often in the past comparing death metal vocals to like a um to like a strong accent. You know, talking to someone who's got a strong Spanish accent or French accent or whatever the hell it is. And at the start, you're like, man, I can't even understand what that person's saying. But once you like pick up a few words, it's like. Mm. Uh, okay and then it gets a bit easier and if you do like you know just maybe peruse some lyrics and then have a look back at it and then you're like you'll get even for one or two songs then you can get your head around actually what i'm saying it's it's i mean i personally think i can understand what I'm saying. as opposed to like back you know in the uh in the early days like say on the um on the self-titled album or even on the ep it was um it was more about let's just go as heavy as we can you know and really just and try and really fucking belt that out and not worry too much about, you know, the pronunciation, the diction of the words themselves too for the um, the fans to understand. But now, because I spend so much time writing my lyrics, I, I want people to understand what the hell I'm saying. So, yes. anyway. <laughs> and yet, well, I mean, the modern, modern death core and stuff like that, the vocals there, they're doing the tongue twisty shit now, you know, where mm. they, they sound like they've had bees Stung, you know, yeah. and I guess that's yeah. a technique. That's a style now, so, and I guess it's harder to understand what they're, they're saying because they're yeah. Once again, too, I've never been one for uh, you know the 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 mic cupping or any of the other sort of like tricks to come with it. I'm just like <coughs> old school, old school, and straight up. Mm. Yeah, hold that's, my that's mic and ho- hold my mic at a distance out here somewhere and just. So you got the project. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. And, uh, of course, I mean. Uh, you know, you're a big horror fan and your lyrics are inspired Massive. by that, you know, and uh, do you usually start with a story or concept that you want to work with for each song or uh, ha- ha- which, where does that come along in the songwriting for you vocally? Yeah, normally, normally it's a, uh, it's a concept and then that concept becomes the song. Um, like for, say for the first few tracks on the album, um conflagration of the dreamers is like a is a follow-up to um flesh furnace from dead speak um the second track uh the gory hole we were, <laughs> we were actually at rehearsals and we were like i don't know what the fuck we were talking about it's always something slutty and silly and um I thought, like the real holes just came into the conversation as they do and uh and i was like oh the gory hole and i was just like Fuck, what a great name for a song. So I went home that night and just like bang, 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 bang and smashed out the gory hole. That doesn't sound right. No, but it's staying. In- um- <laughs> <laughs> smashed in the gory hole. Yeah. Uh, um- anyway, wrote that one. All and right. then Sins of the Father, which was um, – that, that, that was interesting actually because that actually came um, once we had the concept for the album cover. Yeah. Then Sins of the, the song Sins of the Father sort of like came – soon thereafter I, I um so just just a brief thing on 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 how that came about so i was working with um uh a friend of mine lee who i did the um she did like all the the makeup effects for um never enough stuff um this time though we went down to um visit a guy called larry who works for a company called scarecrow studios and they do all special effects for a lot of big film and, um, and and television. So we went down to have a look at his prosthetics and, and, and what he had available and a range of like different, you know, corpses, limbs, severed heads, dead babies, fucking you name it. He's, he's got a whole lot. So I had this like whole array of stuff to play with. And, um, but there was one, one particular prosthetic he had, which is the chest prosthetic. And I was just like, okay, I really want to do something with that. I don't know what, but I want to make that work. And then um, myself, Lee, and the photographer, um, Pauline, we went out for lunch and just started throwing around ideas. And I'm like, well, you know, what about this? What about that? And then we came up with the concept of, um, you know, a priest being um, uh, fucked in the heart with a crucifix uh, by my beautiful daughter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> Fun fact. Fun fact. Yeah, hey. yeah. yeah. <laughs> who is, who is, who is um, yeah, playing a, uh, a gnarly... Uh, Hellspawn, 
So um, yeah, that 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 was that was sort of like how the concept came about, and then from there came the song um, of um, the sins of the father. And why it's sins of the father is because this priest has been basically slaughtering children and uh, offering them up as sacrifices to his dark gods. And then this is sort of like a the, then the covers like a you know him getting his come up and mm. the hell's revenge of of you know one of the hell's said hellspawns coming up and just having at him. I love it. It's so yeah. good. So good. <laughs> so I mean, what I mean, talking horror. I don't know if you can see what's in the background here. There. No, what is that? Uh, Evil Dead flag. So, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so Bruce is like my hero, and then I've got like a shrine to Evil Dead here. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, so that, that's my thing. But what, what yeah. about you? What's your if? What's your top three? This is such a tough question because it's like, for me, uh, I mean, I've been reading horror consistently for, I'm going to say, more than 40 years now, and watching horror movies for <laughs> God, even longer, like probably f- more than 45 years. So like before I was, as, as long as I can remember, I've watched horror since I was a little kid. And I'm now, I just turned 54. So um, it's hard to say, like back in the day, like, yeah, the Evil Deads and the Hellraisers and the whatnot, you know, before that, all your classics and everything too. At the moment, uh, like just things that I've seen recently that I really like, um, like from last year, I thought uh, uh, When Evil Lurks, um, Spanish film was fantastic. Mm. Um, I really like the new Omen, like the first Omen, I thought was quite good. Um, I watched Long Legs the other day, I thought it was fantastic. Um, uh, um, Late Night with the Devil. I saw uh, it. I saw it in cinemas. It's so fucking good. I think I watched it for the fourth time last week. So, so seeing it at the cinemas and then three times since. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, again, so yeah, I, I love rewatching horror films. I mean, I've got films like you know, back in the day, things like um, Brain Dead, probably Original Evil Dead, um, and one or two others that I would have seen easily more than a hundred times. Mm. And then there's probably like fucking a good 15, 20 films I've seen more than 50 times. Um, and then sort of like twiddles backwards from there. But um, yeah, I mean, I've always had been, had been a collector, you know. I mean, Christ, I had a, I had a Laserdisc collection. Like that's how far I <laughs> Had or have? Had, don't have it anymore. Fucking wish I did have it. I know it'd be worth a bit, but it's, um, yeah. 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 But it's, yeah, and even my DVD collection I've culled, my VHS collection I've culled over the years because I was just sick every time I moved. I was just sick of just crating. Dragging it all in. Crates and crates and crates and crates and crates of shit. It's just like, mate, it just gets too much. You know, like I have a look at it like, seriously, I haven't watched that movie for 12 years. I think it's it's time. So. Man, I'll show you this one. This is one I got here. Uh, I had this here. This is one of my favourites. Uh, Demon Knight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I saw that at the movies when it came out. I think it was yeah. who was I can't remember who was doing the soundtrack for it. Was it maybe like Roadrunner or something? And and yeah, it's banger. So and, the, and the, yeah, and they got they got they got us tickets for it, so we ended up going along to the, uh, for the opening night. Oh, really? That's yeah. cool, man. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. One of my favorite. it's signed by Billy Zane. So there you go. That's one of my awesome. Favorite. Yeah, that, that was no, that was a cracker. But I wasn't a rap for Bordello. I thought it was meh. Nah, but, it was um, meh. But, that but one, that one was really good. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. But um, mm-hmm. of course, uh, you know, you've been doing this uh a long time, uh, since what 1988, I believe. When At 88, yeah, we kicked off as 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 Akron back in the day, and it was had our first first show in 88, and then um, yeah, and then sort of then it was yeah the demo came out in uh, in 89, and then uh yeah just string of releases from there but then of course we had a um we had the break yes uh from 2002 to 2016 so that was a uh, a fair fair time out a necessary time out which was good too like it actually worked out you well. still jamming during that time were you uh, yourself what were you doing during that time didn't do shit i did nothing so i mean i wasn't doing nothing i wasn't like you know in some sort of 
suspended. <laughs> frozen. Just, that is it. <laughs> Hanging upside down in the cupboard somewhere. Like, nah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> or, I, or I was, <laughs> or I was in a coffin waiting for like you know, waiting for darkness to fall once more. You know, I was um yeah no I, I I actually just like had a had a massive break from the metal scene altogether. I didn't. Oh well, that's not completely true because I did sort of like how we got back together again, but. I had a decent break. I think it was a good ten years before I I did anything with metal again. And then mm. Dave was touring, um, uh, who was it? Uh, Goat Whore and Behemoth, and a friend of mine knew I was a um, Acid Bath fan from back in the day, and he's just like, "I got your tickets for Goat Whore." I'm like, "All right, cool. I haven't been to a metal gig for a decade, but I'll I'll go." And I went, and I fucking loved it, and it was awesome. And um, and at that show, I ran into Tim. And then Tim introduced me to Dave and he said, oh, if we ever get the band back together, this guy's going to be playing drums. I'm like, whatever. There you go. And it'll never happen, but sure. You know, thank me now. There you go. Um, <laughs> and then Rob hit me up in, uh, in 2016 and said, look, you know, when um, I've got this big Metal from Melbourne show going on, um, and if you, you want to do it, and I'm like, look, I'll do it, but I'm not doing anything. I mean, you know, of course, I'll sing and I'll jam and all that sort of stuff. And when I say not doing anything, is because I used to be um, like band manager back in the day, and I think that was that was the part I didn't like in the end. You know, like the business side of it. I just wanted to scream death metal, and I didn't want to deal with all the other shit. And then, and all that other shit became a real pain in the ass. So I was just like, mate, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do it. He's like, that's all right. I'll do everything. And I'm like, all right, you do everything. I'm in. So then he came back to me like within a week. He's like, right, I've done everything and gone. And I'm like. Shit. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's say I would. So here I am. Let's go. And um, yeah, that was the that was an interesting one. It's just like um, you know, like in the body, the cells like you know regenerate every seven years, and it's all new stuff. Well, it had been fourteen years, so I'm like twice regenerated, even though I feel obviously fourteen years older. But like from a cellular level and everything else too, and a lot, I didn't even know if I could still do it. You know. I'm like, fuck, this will be interesting. We'll have a crack. So, yeah, that first rehearsal was interesting. I think we did, um, what was it? Um, I, can't remember, I can't remember what track we did first, but we did it. We smashed it out and we stopped and we, like, looked at each other and we were like, sick. Yeah. That was really good. And then, <laughs> and then went and belted out a few other tracks and it was all pretty good too. But, yeah, I remember, like, that first one, like, my throat was so sore. Like, I think I did a, a maybe half a dozen tracks, seven tracks, something like that at that first rehearsal. And I was, yeah, sorry, it wasn't good for a few days. But then, like, I always, and I, and I always say this to people with death metal, it's just like, mate, if you used to go to the gym and you used to squatting, like, you know, yep. 80, 90 kilos, and then you don't go to the gym for, like, three years and you're straight under the bar and try and do that squat, that's what my throat felt like. You have to do. <laughs> and I find that, man, if I have, like, uh, a couple of weeks off and I've yeah. Lazy, I'll have yeah. that little. T- you you gotta you gotta keep it going, hey. Yeah, it's it's not well. It's not for us. It's more like just like life stuff, you know. Like Dave's new dad this year, and we've all had you know a bunch of other things on. So like when we played um, Melbourne and Adelaide just recently, it was like August shows. They were our first shows this year, and we only rehearsed like a month prior. So we had like once again six months no jamming. And then, like, just before shows, you're on again. So we were, actually, we were supposed to rehearse. We're supposed to be shooting a video clip tonight, and we we're supposed to rehearse last night. But Dave had a family emergency, so both of those things are off. So we've got Canberra on Friday week, and we get one rehearsal. <laughs> oh man, it's like I, I, I better be with you, boys. Mm. You're like riding the bike. It was like last night. Yeah, that. it is. It's it's not. Yeah, but it's like for me, it's not. I can't really practice at home. Like I can't, just, you know, walk around the house yelling at my kids. <laughs> God forbid. But like in, you know, like for forty five minutes in death metal. Yeah. Be... <laughs> I think it's hard. It is hard. Probably get a call, a few calls from the neighbors. <laughs> so I can't do it at home. I have to do it in the car. Yeah. Well, even in the car, you know, like to do it at the the way that I belt it out, like it's not. It's just not that easy to do. Like I, I, I find it very difficult, if not impossible, to do by myself. Like I need the boys surrounding me to, to you know, for the sound, for the projection, for the energy, for the everything. Like it just, it's just the way that it, that it 
that it works for me. So Do you find it's a very yeah. physical thing as well. Like you oh, will yeah. certain things, you'll move your body and contort your body for certain, which doesn't look like but one one hundred percent. It's just like it's you know for me to sort of like I sort of lean in and tense my abs yeah. and just and just really fucking have it large. Which is like why at the back end of a show I am saturated. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> I've, I've mentioned it like several times on stage that like you know the, the, the death metal is pretty much borderline an Olympic sport. Well, for myself as a singer anyway, yeah. and I think it's like the way that you that you do project and you do carry on. Like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty active on stage. I mean, like, I think like all the way back to, you know, um, I suppose right at the start in the, in the very early days, like probably not so much, but um, from the, um, from the, uh, you know, mid to late nineties onwards for that sort of, I suppose, latter section of our uh, chapter one, um, it was uh, that that was always getting pretty intense, and then and then it definitely since like you know chapter two kicked off, it's been like that the whole time. It's just like always really really full on. So I do have to be um, I, I do have to stay match fit. So luckily I'm a PT and a trail runner, and, and I go to the gym and I'm just yeah fit, fit anyway. So it, but that does actually complement um, what I'm what I'm doing on stage. So. That's what I'm trying. I've got to get my health journey going. <laughs> I know a good PT. I can help. <laughs> well, I'm here. I need someone to kick my ass. But, uh, but man, of course, I mean, you've got this pestilence. Uh, mm. Holy shit. And alarm and the alarm boys. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's pretty exciting. I think actually uh, we had um, Alarum support us when we released Dead Speak back in, in 2000. So, oh. um, and I don't think we've shared the stage with them since so that's pretty cool yeah (laughs) 24 years later back together again so yeah that'll be pretty cool and um yeah pestilence is uh is wild i mean it's you know like massive fans of um malleus maleficarum it wasn't you know as keen when they um did the the vocalist range and, and musically it just wasn't you know as exciting for me, but those first two albums, fuck, uh, yeah, on very high repeat. And I think I, I mean, back then, but I even still listen to them occasionally now. Like, they're so good, timeless albums. Are you, mm. So uh, I guess you're doing the full run. You're going to be coming up here, Queensland as well. Which is, which yeah, is- well, not full. We're not doing Adelaide because um, they're playing at the uh, Froth and the Fury and we just played Adelaide and uh, yeah. it just didn't work out that way. So, um, but we are doing um, Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne and that's it. But then we'll head back to Adelaide at some point to do our own show because we played over there recently, yeah, at this um, festival and it was just too many bands, you know, they had... It was a full day thing, like 12 hours, and then I don't know how many bands there were. It was like pinging off stage to stage with like pretty much no breaks, you know, 45 minute sets. So do the math, math, do the math, <laughs> do the math. It was, um, it was, it was ridiculous amount of bands. And I think by the time, like, you know, the, um, you know, the latter bands came on, there was just the poor crowd just had nothing left, you know. You know I can belt out a song like at 110. percent It's just like, yay, you know, it's like mate. Um, anyway, long story short, I want to get back to Adelaide uh, at some stage. Definitely get back down to Tassie, Perth. Meh, always challenging. You know, it's just like it's fucking so expensive on our like no death metal budget to, no death to, get asses, <laughs> to get their asses over there. So it's, um, yeah. I mean, even, even like doing pestilence, you know, like it's, yeah. it's sort of like really just making enough to like, you know, cover your flights and your transport and your accommodation and all of that sort of stuff. And there's not a lot left. I mean, realistically for us, as you know, it's just that, it, you know, if it wasn't for the merch, um, you will. <laughs> we're yeah. t-shirt salesmen that just play music that's exactly what we mm. call ourselves yeah 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 pretty much so it's uh yeah it is about that and it's um and then if you know there's a little bit extra left over i mean for us it's always been like we've never taken anything from the band ever we're like it's always just rolls back in again goes back into the next t-shirt design or it goes back into the next recording or it goes back into the next whatever else so it's um yeah do it for the love right that's that's exactly right, man. But uh, <laughs> you've done you've done 
big supports and, and tools like that in the past. Has there been Dance. one that's, uh, you know, that sticks out to you as, as the most significant? Um, well, the first the first one we did was um, Carcass for the Heartwork Tour back in, when was that, like 93, mm. I think. Um, so that was, that's memorable because it was like our first, you know, international um and then doing a bunch after that with, this, you know, a couple of Morbid Angels, a couple of Cradle of Filths and fucking this and that and Cannibal Corpse and whatever else too. But one, one that actually really sticks out that was a lot of fun we did with um, uh, uh, Paradise Lost and Cathedral and that was more because, like, the Cathedral guys were a lot of fun. Paradise Lost, not so much at all. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd say that one. And, and even more recently too, doing the um, Immolation Dark Funeral support, which, once again, Immolation guys, awesome dark funeral oh really so, yeah that one dicks oh wow <laughs> okay <laughs> calling it like it is man we're a pretty friendly bunch of guys mate yeah, 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 like, yeah. wouldn't have the time of day for anyone and just, it's just like fucking whatever dude. simulation was so nice you know like it's fucking and at the end of the day that's all you really notice you know like and it's it's and it can be a bit shit if you're a fanboy of a certain band and then you meet the band and they're dicks. And you're just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been like there. It really just, just took the wind out of the sails, you know. So, so it's, um, yeah. But, you know, maybe that – I'd like to say they were having an off day, but when you do a whole tour and you do multiple shows and they're dicks the whole time, you're just like, it's all in a space. Yeah, it, sucks. it sucks, man. <laughs> it sucks when that happens. I had to turn my fan card in with a band years ago. Yeah, I lost two days' work because of one of them, and then yeah, uh, right. And then I just oh, it all unfolded. I was like, man, I can't support this band anymore. Uh, it's disappointing. But, yeah, it sucks. It does suck. Yeah, but um, of course, uh, Zoom's going to boot us off very soon. Uh, yeah. What what's uh what's the future looking like for for you guys in into twenty twenty five? Which is weird to say. Uh, I, well, number one, as I said, get some stock in. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's the focus at the moment. Uh, get stock in, get, you know, all the merch done and everything else to get this, you know, Sims out to uh, to Australia and the world. Mm. And then, um, yeah, the the uh, upcoming Pestilent shows. Um, I, I don't know what else is booked after that. Um, uh, but, yeah, look, there'll be a bunch of other shows into, uh, into 2025. Um, if all goes well with the Hammerheart release and Napalm and everything too, potentially our first international, but that's watch this space the guys are open to it um we have started talking with some guys over there but it's all very embryonic at this time so fucking who knows and then knowing the uh matt machine and the way that he pumps out riffs and now that we've got joe in the band as well i wouldn't surprise me if they start going so you um you um you um hey. before too long so yeah we'll uh we'll wait and see but I, I, if, if yeah if, if i was a betting man I, I reckon that's how it's going to play out that's exciting dude yeah, <laughs> well, that's you know that uh, apart from the stock thing, hopefully that that turns out. Are you gonna hopefully have some vinyl when you come up here? You... Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. I mean, fuck. By the time that rocks around, well, I mean, well, yeah, whatever's left. So it's like I know limited editions, or like we put it up for pre-sale, and it's so, limited edition sold out in like two hours. So yeah, and it's it's not. Just so fans know, it's not really that different. It's only got one other piece of cardboard on the front, so you get both covers, and it's got the splatter vinyl. But then I thought the blue vinyl was the nicest anyway, so it's just like, but anyway, that's just my opinion. Well, I'll get what I can take. I'll get yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll buy, I'll buy it. I'll, yeah, I'll buy one. You can scribble it for me. <laughs> Easy, no problem. Yeah, look, we'll definitely, we'll definitely have a whole range of stuff by the time we get on tour. That's, that's how good. we make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. T-shirt salesman. <laughs> Play death metal. But uh, in yeah. the meantime, brother, we're going to have all the links down here uh, in the show notes and on the website. Uh, Simon, thanks for hanging out, man. It's cool to meet you. Thank you so much. Brilliant.